Hello and welcome to lesson number two in how to read music, the piano basics. In this lesson, you're going to discover the piano and the keyboard and music appreciation. So what does it mean to play the piano? Well, and what does it mean to read music, to have a basic understanding of the piano keyboard? Well, in the next five days, my task for you is to listen to the piano, find, either go to a live concert or just ask someone you know who plays the piano to, to play for you, or, or if you play by ear, then just play for yourself. Um, or you could find some recorded piano music, search the internet for piano music. It's good to be able to hear the sound before you then go into the, digging into the music theory part of it. So now we're going to investigate the piano and the keyboard. But the question is, why are we looking into the piano? Well, when learning to read music, the sheet music, it is helpful to relate what we see on the piece of paper to the piano. And the reason for that is, is the piano is an instrument that covers all the bases for the pitch, from the very, very low notes up to the very, very high notes. So it's a good um, grounding. So for anyone who's going to be learning a musical instrument, it's a good foundation for you when you're learning an any other instrument to learn the, the basics of how to play the piano first as you learn your music theory. And then if you and then ha have a thorough understanding of that. And once you're familiar with it, then you can progress on to any other instrument that you want to do. And of course, when we read music, we are discovering what it is, what are the notes, what, is it a high note or, lo, or low note, what is it that the composer wants us to play on, on their chosen instrument. And for the purposes of this course, we will take it for granted that the music that we see written is, is written for the piano. Well, what is the, what is the piano? Well, we're going to look into the history of the piano and the keyboard and um, exactly what is acoustic and what is digital. Well, interestingly, the piano was uh, apparently invented in Italy by uh, an Italian man who's from Padua. His name was Bartolomeo Cristofori. And in 1688, he was appointed to the Florentine court with the Grand Prince Ferdinando de' Medici to care for the harpsichords. And the earliest keyboard instrument is reported to be an early version of the pipe organ. So Bartolomeo Cristofori, he is, he, it's reported that he actually created the first piano because he was, he was looking after the harpsichords in the, in the court and he wanted something that was more versatile instrument. So from his work in caring for the harpsichords, he created and invented what is now known as, as a piano. But before the piano, there was the pipe organ. And the, the pipe organ is the very earliest keyboard instrument that exists. And that was um, created by the ancient Greeks, not surprisingly. It was called the hydraulis, and it was invented in the third century before Christ. Now, in today's modern society, we have the digital keyboard. But as well as a digital keyboard, we also have a digital piano, which is such, which often has weighted keys and is touch sensitive. And then we have the piano, acoustic, which is an acoustic piano, and that's what we know as a traditional piano, which is comes in basically two sorts. It's either the upright piano, um, which tends to be wooden, and it has a frame, which could be a wooden frame or an iron frame, or it could be a grand piano. Of course, there's a pipe organ that you see at the churches and there's the electronic organ, which you often see in people's homes for those people that are learning to play the organ. So what sorts of pianos are there on the market? Well, there is a wooden acoustic piano and you can get that with the wooden frame or the iron frame. Uh, personally, I prefer the sound of the iron frame, but um, it, I mean, the piano sounds so different. And I, I think everyone has their own taste as well. Nowadays, you can get a digital piano. And digital pianos are really good, especially if you move around a lot. I mean, it's particularly good for travellers. 
for people that are sort of working from one place to the next or, or for um, people who are students that often don't have a fixed abode, they, they often rent a place for six months or a year and then the following year they, they rent a room somewhere else. So for them, a digital piano is ideal, especially if you're sharing a house with other people, then you can just put the headphone into the socket of the digital piano, which means you can play at any time of the day and night without waking up your neighbours, the people in the room next to you. And with these digital pianos, you can get them so that they have weighted keys and a touch sensitive. So it's, it's as close as you can get to the, the original acoustic piano and that you can control the volume of the piano as you play. So you can, you can actually have control that as you play the note, the, the key on the piano, you can play it softly so that it's a very, so that it's very soft volumes so that you hardly hear it. Or you can play with great, with, with a great motion and you can make, create really loud sounds. So now there is a di difference between a digital piano and an electronic keyboard. A touch sensitive piano, a, di a digital one, is a popular and cheaper option than the acoustic piano. Uh, but even cheaper than this, uh, the digital, digital piano is an electronic keyboard. The electronic keyboard is usually smaller than the digital piano. It won't have the full set of keys. And also it's not touch sensitive, so you can't control the volume of the of the note just by how you play it. Um, all the all the, the volume of the, all of the notes will sound exactly the same. So it's not ideal really when you're when you're learning if you want to learn the piano effectively. So let's look into the keyboard itself. So the keyboard is one thing that's consistent. I mean all the instruments we've talked about, the a uh, pipe organ, the electronic organ. The acoustic piano and the digital piano and the electric keyboard they all have keyboards so it doesn't really matter what which of those instruments you play whichever one you play you're going to be using the keyboard so you can navigate your way around on the keyboard now the piano itself has 88 keys and so if you buy a digital piano which is touch sensitive that will also have 88 keys however if you buy uh, an electronic keyboard most likely that will have i don't know 60 keys or, or certainly much less many much less keys possibly even 20. so the piano has 88 keys and it has a series of, of long rectangular shapes sitting next to each other that we call the keys and of course it goes off the name keyboard keys on a board think of like an ironing board <laughs> the shape of an ironing board it's long and rectangular and then you think of the rectangular shapes long vertical rectangular shapes you put along put along the the ironing board and then you've got yourself a, a keyboard keys on the board now the keys are mostly white but there are smaller black keys that are a little bit shorter and they're interspersed along the keyboard following a certain pattern so what i would like you to do is for your exercise at home is to draw you draw yourself get a blank piece of paper and draw two long horizontal lines now draw 10 vertical lines from the top of the your page to the bottom of the page and then you will have now created your white keys now on your white so I mean, i'm going to call them notes so on the first two notes which is your first two lots of vertical lines i'd like you to draw a rectangle in between each of those from the top of your page down halfway and color this in black and then what you will have done is created your first black key. Now you need to draw another black key by drawing another rectangle across the next lot of two white keys. And then you will have then you will have drawn your first set of two black keys. Carry on with this, but do a pattern of three black keys with the next lot of black keys that you draw. So looking looking into the keyboard layout, the keyboard consists of a series of what we call keys, but just how many keys are there? And what colours do the keys come in? Well, the key, the, the keys come in a series of 88 keys. They are in a series of white keys and black keys. And, and so those are the two colours, white and black. So with the exercise where I've asked you to draw it, don't get alarmed if you feel you cannot draw because if you have a printer at home or access to a printer at work or at the library, 
say at the local library or the printers, then you can print out the downloadable keyboard that I've got in the class handout section for you under this lesson, under lesson two. So print that out and then, then you can use that to place your keys, or place your hands or fingers over the keys and use it to practice on. Um, and you can use it for the exercises that you're going to come across in the next lessons as well. And if you have access to a laminator, it's really going to be helpful to you if you can laminate the, um, the printable keyboard. But if, if you don't, then don't worry about it. You can just print out multiple copies of the keyboard when you need it or simply just draw it. I mean, practice drawing, drawing it at home. So here I've got reference to the silent keyboard. You can use it to practice playing on the keys. You can use it for the exercises for naming the keys and getting familiar with it. So you can create your own lasting silent keyboard just by laminating the paper that you've printed the keyboard onto. And it's actually really handy to, to have a piece of paper. So whether or not you've printed it or you've just got a blank piece of paper and a pen, then you wherever you are, if you're just waiting around in a queue or something or waiting for something, you can just draw your own piano keyboard. So draw those vertical lines which, which creates your white keys and then draw the smaller rectangles and colour them in black. So you've got your sets of two black keys and three black keys. And then you've got your own keyboard. And you can use it for so many things when you're, when you're practising and trying to figure things out. It really is handy. So what you need to do is memorise the keyboard layout by practising drawing it. And so draw it out every day for the next five days. And then once you've drawn your your keyboards, take photos of them and upload them to the private members Facebook group. Do the work, make it real. So do this over the next five days. Practice drawing your own keyboard. And um, if you want to, you can also print out the silent keyboard that, that I've uploaded there on the file and you can laminate it so that you can reuse it over and over again for future lessons and future work. Thank you so much for joining me in this lesson. It's been a pleasure and I look forward to, to um, discussing things with you in the next lesson.